G'day everyone, it's Mark here from North Oz and in today's video, you know, we're gonna be talking about kind of the other side of the top five things you should do to your vehicle. And it's the top five things that, you know, you probably don't really need to do to your vehicle first. So um, obviously these videos are kind of aimed at people that are building out their vehicle and they're interested in the topic as well. So, you know, where can we save a little bit of money as well? You know, it's not always about going out, buying, 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 and putting stuff to, on the cars. That's great, I love doing that, of course we all do, but also trying to save some money where we can so we can get out and enjoy our trips. So again, it's gonna be another interesting video. I'm looking forward to it. So stick around, roll the intro and get stuck into it. So the first thing that people love to do is they love to go out and they'll buy themselves a brand new set of tires. You know, it's not cheap though, guys. You know, we're talking about two grand for two and a half grand for a good set of all-terrain and mud-terrain tires. But the truth of the matter is most of the people can get by with just the stock set of tires. So for me, these are basically a highway terrain, a little bit more aggressive than a basic road tire. I have gone off-road, on-road, done about 10,000 Ks with a mixture of both and these have served me really well. Your knowledge of tire pressures and, and picking the right line and that is going to come in a lot more handy than going out and spending two and a half grand on a set of tires. So for most people, these tires will probably do the trick for you. So um, yeah, I would save you money a little bit there. Use these, see how they go. If you don't like them and they're not doing the job for you, you can always swap them over later. But not much point chucking these in the bin and spending another two and a half grand. So the next thing that we'll talk about is the bull bar or lack of it. On these vehicles, they cost significantly more than some other vehicles like 79 series. So if it was for a different vehicle I was building, I might go out and buy one. But because it costs so much to put a bull bar on this vehicle, I've held off on it. It also does compress the suspension, which is gonna decrease my off-road performance, which means I'm gonna to have to go out and spend more money on suspension. So you can see it's a slippery slope. So I've held off on that. Um, nothing's jumped out in front of my vehicle yet. Uh, and you know, I've done about 10,000 Ks uh, on and off the road and everything's been fine so far. Little things like being a bit more sensible about you know what times of the day I'm traveling, traveling you know to my next campsite you know two and getting in by four or five in the afternoon makes a little bit more sense than you know, heading off at five and getting in at seven or eight at night. So uh, you know being a little bit more uh, clever about the way that I'm traveling uh, you know just you know increases the safety just a little bit more and you know things aren't going to jump out in front of the vehicle. One more thing I'll say is that uh, this car is insured. So worst case scenario, uh, you know, something does jump out in front of the vehicle, smashes the front of it. Well, yeah, while that's going to be a hassle, uh, my excess is not going to be $8,000 uh, like it would be if I was to get a bull bar and, and suspension. So something to think about as well. And um, so yes, yeah, another thing is basically don't rush out and buy, you know, all the bar work if you don't need it. Now I'd like to credit tip number three to save your money on. Uh, to 4 before diesel. So um, the guy over there, he uh, is recommended to not get recovery uh, points because basically they come standard on these vehicles anyway and they're mounted to the chassis. So that's just another thing, guys. I don't know too much about it. However, he did a really, really good video on um, how they look from the factory compared to ones that um, you, know, you can buy and basically bolt on. And he makes a really, really valid point on there as well. So if you haven't seen that video, perhaps go out and go and check it out. Uh, but for me, I'm not gonna rush out and spend money on recovery points when the factory ones will do the job. Tip number four on things to save your money on is uh, a you know, set of lights, so spotlights in particular. So a lot of people, they think that they need to go out and buy the biggest lights they can and spend thousands of dollars on lighting. But the truth of the matter is guys, and I'm guilty of that as well, I've got a light bar up here that I use. Truth of the matter is the LED lights that are on these vehicles are really, really bright and they do a fantastic job on high beam as well. So 
for the majority of people, don't feel like that maybe you need to go out and spend $1,000 on upgrading lights on the bull bar on your roof rack or whatever. That's something that I probably wouldn't stress out about next time. And that's something that I did think, oh, I'm going to need some sort of extra light or light upgrade when really these factory headlights do a fantastic job on and off the road. But of course, if you're going really, really remote and it's really, really dark and some of the places you're going are pretty sketchy, having a little bit of extra light helps. But guys, you can do it for a lot cheaper than spending thousands of dollars on lights. A really, really basic light bar for under five, four hundred dollars will do the same thing in a lot of cases. So just something to think about, save your money on that, see how the stock headlights go and you know make your decision from there. So guys, the last thing that we're gonna talk about is having drawers. Now, in the previous videos, I've said, yeah, great, take out seat six and seven, fantastic, put a drawer system in there. However, they can be quite expensive. So is it worthwhile going out, spending two, three grand on a drawer system? Is that worthwhile? Well, for me, no. You know, I, I built this drawer system myself. Everything in this vehicle, I be either designed uh, the layout, or I have bought and installed, or I have built from scratch, like this back setup here. So um, I've got drawers, for example, and drawers can be a little bit more difficult to build than obviously just having some sort of cubby with containers in it. But for a lot of you guys, it's probably going to be enough. You know, so for me. I really like having the drawers. That's something that, I've, uh, that I have enjoyed using. It worked for me as well, building it. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. Worst case scenario, I was just gonna use containers, but the drawers actually worked. And if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it as well. So for me, yes, drawers work well, but you don't necessarily have to go out and buy an expensive drawer system. Just keep that in mind um, as you are going through your build. You know, if you're a little bit worried about price and, and, um, and, and that sort of stuff, you can get away with doing something like this for just a couple of hundred bucks. So, and, an, and a day, you know. So uh, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. So that's the last thing that I wanted to talk about. And uh, so let's wrap it up. So guys, the point of today's video was just to get you starting to think about things that maybe you don't need. And have a think about it. As you are buying things for your vehicle, is it stuff that's going to add to your trips and keep you safer? Or is it just going to be, hmm, I would like it, but do I need it? So that's what I'm just trying to get you guys to think about a little bit. I love buying stuff for my vehicle. And of course, you know, the whole YouTube, um, you know, uh, market, uh, the whole aftermarket of vehicles as well is, is all about, you know, what you can buy for your vehicle. But not many people really go into the whole, you know, what you don't need to buy for your vehicle. So, you know, try to save some money where you can, use that money for trips and going out and working less and enjoying the outdoors a little bit more because that's really what it is about at the end of the day. So if you guys got some value out of today's video, make sure you click the like button. It helps out the video, helps other people see the video too and uh, and subscribe and do all that good stuff. And if you guys have things in that, that you've come across that's like, you know what? I don't think I really need that on my vehicle. Or I saw this person had it on their vehicle and they said, that you know they shouldn't have bought it at all put that in the comments as well because i might do another video of five more things that you shouldn't buy for your vehicle so uh, guys i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you then